Thank you for choosing a Woods Power Grip vacuum lifter to help you install insulated metal panels safely and efficiently. We've created this video to assist you in the correct setup and use of your WPG cladding lifter. Please be advised, this presentation is not intended to be a substitute for the lifter's instructions. Each operator should read and understand the entire instruction manual before operating a vacuum lifter. WPG cladding lifters are delivered in a reusable crate to protect the lifter during transport. Open the shipping crate and remove all lifter restraints. Be sure to keep the crate and restraints for repacking. Remove the box of vacuum pads from the shipping crate. Before you remove the lifter from the shipping crate, disengage the tilt latches as shown and raise the lift bar to the upright position. Make sure the tilt latches re-engage to hold the lift bar in position. Adjust the lift bail position to keep anticipated loads at the desired hang angle. Make sure the lift bail is positioned to prevent contact between the lifter and any panel lifted. Attach the hoisting equipment to the lift bail and gently raise the lifter from the shipping crate. Never raise the lifter while the lift bar is latched in the lower position. This can cause damage to the lifter. An optional remote control system is available for this lifter. Refer to the instructions to connect, inspect, and test the remote control. Remove the extension arms and other remaining parts from the shipping crate. Assemble the pad frame in the configuration that will provide optimal support of the load when lifted. Install pad frame components and vacuum pads as desired and secure them with the cotterless hitch pins. Always arrange the vacuum pads in a symmetrical configuration for both width and length dimensions. Use a quick connector to attach each vacuum hose from a vacuum pad to the correct circuit of the vacuum system. An equal number of pads should be connected to each color-coded circuit and evenly spaced to support the panel surface. Securely connect the electrical connectors uniting the battery with the vacuum generating system and the charger. The charger connector may be located inside the power system enclosure depending on your version of the lifter. Before you put the lifter into service, perform the required inspections and tests as directed in the instruction manual. Inspect your cladding lifter before every use as directed in the instructions. Examine all controls and indicators for visual damage. Examine the air filters and remove any liquid or contaminants found in the bowls. Always check the battery for adequate charge before each lift. If battery energy registers less than 50%, charge the battery fully before operating the lifter. If a battery loses its charge quickly or is unable to maintain a charge for a full work shift, replace it immediately. Make sure sealing edges of all vacuum pads are in good condition and free of contaminants. Determine the appropriate position for the lifter on the load based on the desired orientation of the panel. If necessary, adjust the lift bail position to keep anticipated loads at the desired hang angle and to prevent contact between the lifter and panel. A padded barrier can also be used to ensure protection of the insulated metal panel. When you are lowering the lifter onto the insulated metal panel, carefully align the vacuum pads between the panel ribs when applicable. Adjust the position of pads as necessary to ensure proper alignment. To lift an insulated metal panel for a roof installation, configure the pad frame to properly support the entire length and weight of the panel. Position the pad frame on the center of the panel and engage the tilt latches. To lift an insulated metal panel for a horizontal wall installation, the pad frame should be configured in the same way as for roof panels. Place the lifter on the center of the panel so that it extends equally on either side of the pad frame. Once you lift the panel, tilt it to the upright position and engage the tilt latches to prevent unexpected tilt motion. To lift an insulated metal panel for a vertical wall installation, the pad frame configuration does not need to support the entire length of the panel. 
before you tilt the panel upright, the tilt latches must be disengaged to prevent damage to the lifter. Position the pad frame about one third of the way inward from the end that will become the top of the panel when lifted. This position will be above center when you tilt the panel upright. Once you have positioned the lifter correctly on the panel, turn the power switch to the on position. To generate vacuum, locate the apply release switch on the movable control pendant and turn the switch to the apply position. Place the lifter's pad frame in contact with the insulated metal panel until all pads seal against it. The lifter must remain on and in the apply mode during the entire lift. After the vacuum system reaches full vacuum, as shown in green on the vacuum gauge, the vacuum pumps will shut off automatically to conserve battery energy. However, the pumps will occasionally cycle to maintain sufficient vacuum for lifting. If the pump cycles more frequently than once every few minutes, stop using the lifter immediately and consult the instructions for maintenance information. The vacuum gauges and green lift light must remain visible so you can monitor them throughout the entire lift. If the vacuum level falls below 16 inches of mercury, stay clear of the load and, if possible, lower the load safely to the ground. Do not resume normal operation of the lifter until the cause of the vacuum loss is fixed. Never lift a load over people and keep all personnel far enough away from the lifter to avoid injury in the event of an unexpected load release. After you set the insulated metal panel down, do not use the lifter to drag the panel into final position. This can cause damage to the lifter. Once the panel is fully supported and securely fastened in position, you may release the lifter from the load. Turn the apply release switch to the release position and hold it while pressing the enable release button at the same time. Move the lifter away from the load. Continue to hold both switches until the pads disengage completely from the load. When these switches are released, the lifter will automatically return to a power saving mode to maximize battery life. If you are not planning another lift, turn the power off to conserve the battery's charge. Use the hoisting equipment to carefully lower the lifter onto appropriate supports. Do not set the lifter down on any surfaces that would soil or damage the vacuum pads. When the lifter is stable, detach the hoisting equipment from the lift bale. To store or transport the lifter, place extension arms and other parts back into the shipping crate as appropriate. Lower the lifter into the crate and detach the hoisting equipment from the lift bale. Release the tilt latches and lower the lift bar to the original position in the crate. Charge the battery completely and then disconnect the electrical connector between the battery and charger. Disconnecting the battery from the vacuum generating system is also recommended. Repackage the pads with the storage box provided. Reuse the original restraints to hold the lifter in place during transport. Secure the cover of the shipping crate. Your lifter is now ready to move to the next job. Make sure to read, understand, and follow the guidance provided in the instruction manual because it includes additional information and warnings. You can download a copy of instructions for your specific lifter from the product information download page at www.wpg.com.